development, but bags of temperament too. For the second week running, one of their big stars gets the early bath. We have the full story of their match against bottom club Swindon. Manchester City have different problems down amongst the strugglers, as were today's opponent, Sheffield United. That's one of our main feature games. Arsenal, after that great result in Europe, took the best defence in the top division to Southampton. No small part in that defensive record, played, of course, by England keeper David Seaman. And up front, they have one of the most lethal goal scorers in the game. That's our other main match, Southampton against Arsenal. We'll round up the other games as the chase is on for European qualification and for others simply to stay in the Premiership. And Alan and Trevor will be dishing out a few yellow cards tonight, but a few pats on the back as well, we hope. Well, first then, it's Southampton against Arsenal. Saints, one of the clubs in the dogfight to stay up. Arsenal in great form, having lost just once in 15 games. At the Dell is Tony Gubber. Arsenal bring the meanest defence in the Premier League to challenge Southampton's revival. Just 17 goals conceded, but today in Matthew Letizier facing a player who's currently scoring six out of six. Six goals in six games since Alan Ball's return as manager, plus an England cap for the gifted number seven. Now with new responsibilities in a role just behind the front two. Well, Southampton are unchanged for the fifth consecutive match. You can expect the two fullbacks to push on into midfield, leaving three defenders with number 11, Francis Benali, probably given the job of picking up Ian Wright. After the Cup Winners' Cup triumph on Tuesday, Arsenal prove the value of having a large squad. They make six changes. Out go Bold, Davis, Jensen, Smith and Merson. Hillier is still injured. He's again replaced by Selly in midfield. And in come Linigan and Keown into defence. Ray Parler and Anders Limpar into midfield and Kevin Campbell up front. Referee David Frampton hasn't had far to come from Poole in Dorset on a really wonderfully warm south coast afternoon. Southampton attacking the goal to the left and just attempt fate. Only once in the last 25 league meetings between these sides has the game failed to produce a goal. Most of the last half a dozen have had absolute backfalls, which has probably been the kiss of death. However, Arsenal have won five of the last six, and here comes Campbell. Support from Dixon. Limpar and Campbell and Keown, and this is Selly. And it's Southampton who claimed possession. Interestingly, Southampton's home form is almost as good as that of Aston Villa who are up in fifth place in the Premier Division while Southampton are down in 18th and facing a struggle to avoid relegation but things looking good so far since Alan Ball's arrival Alan Ball told by his uh, directors this week that he has got money available to buy a wide player a few more smiles on the faces of Southampton supporters these days with their team beginning to show signs of a turn of form that will lift them away from the threat of relegation Dixon knocks it forward intended for Campbell and Benali who intercepted got a good turn of heel on him Francis Benali and one of the few local boys in this Southampton side Dixon will take the throw Benali's header Dixon Campbell oh Monkau stuck with him well and just forced him away from goal he did very well Monkau because that looked like a good opportunity for Campbell and now Southampton breaking out through Dowie, who is strong enough to hold off the challenge of Adams, but they haven't got enough players forward yet. Kenner down the line. And Madison will chase, but it's out of play. Well, Ken Moncow has been capped by the Dutch at under 21 and does harbour ambitions to get into the World Cup squad, and that was a good bit of defending. 
Maybe Campbell could have been quicker to have got the shot in, but uh, Moncow just held him off and shepherded him away from the goal. Oh, that's a poor ball by Arsenal. Quickly picked up by Charlton. Madison. Well, it wasn't a bad effort. Seaman didn't look troubled. He was confident that it would always be too high. But there are those in the ground who saw it from a different angle. Took it onto his left side, Neil Madison. Just eight weeks into the job, and it's uh, been a very good start for Alan Ball. He's taken 11 points from 18 in six Premier games. Well, Martin Keown has clearly been given the job this afternoon of tight marking Matthew Letitiae, which is why in the first quarter of this match we've seen so little of the Southampton player. Oh, Dixon, poor control. He's having to scramble to salvage the situation. Did well to get it up to Limpar. And now Campbell to run outside Wood. Parler's inside him. Ian Wright's arriving at the back post. Well, Selly knows where Wright is. And that's where it wanted to go first time. Ian Wright was patient. He waited on the edge of the penalty area. Campbell didn't see him or couldn't get it to him anyway. But when it came back out, Ian Selly had spotted exactly where Ian Wright was. Delivered over the top, and Ian Wright, a terrific diving header. Maybe Dave Besson will think he showed him too much of that near post. But with uh, 17 and a half minutes gone, Arsenal have taken the lead. And Ian Wright chalks up his 29th goal of the season. Well done, Ian Selly. England Youth International, just 19 years of age, came on in the game against Torino when Hillier was injured, and he delivered that one perfectly. Here's Kenna. Maskell and Kenna, good ball forward, intended for Magilton. Steve Wood. Space here for Maskell inside to... Magilton, they can't quite work the opening that they're looking for. Maybe now. Maybe now, definitely. Oh, wonderful save by Seaman. Southampton have been so patient to work that opening. And Jeff Kenner popping up in the penalty area with a thumping shot which allowed David Seaman to show just what a good goalkeeper he is. Adams was the defender, but it might have come off Moncow, yes. And in fact, it was Linigan who jumped with Moncow, but it did come off the Southampton player, and it's a goal kick. And Jeff Kenner has scored twice this season. Former Southampton trainee popping up in a, an unaccustomed position in Arsenal's penalty area. Hit it very well, and it's an even better save seen from that angle. Arsenal feel there was a little push in the back of Parler, but play allowed to continue. Letitia, first time he's really had any possession. And Magilton can keep the attack going. Here's Maskell. Letitia. Just too many defenders, but they were nervous and they weren't sure. So Winterburn put it out for a corner. He does make the hearts flutter in defences. Adams sticking close to Dowie. And Moncow, who got the equaliser against Sheffield Wednesday last week. Header down was by Wood. Oh, again, a great save by Seaman. Point blank from Madison. That one looked as if it had to go in. Southampton to try again. Moncow. And finally away by Dixon. Benali. Nicely out to Steve Wood. That's knocked in long. This can come back. Dowie, 
came off a defender, another corner. Well, Southampton are keeping the pressure on, but they've had two excellent chances to score. They just haven't beaten David Seaman. Steve Wood, who was up from the back for the corner, won the header. He directed it into the six-yard box. It bounced up, and Neil Madison, trying to steer his header wide of Seaman, saw it saved. Here comes another corner. And again, Seaman's handling was exemplary. Well, Madison, the second Southampton player, who must have thought that he'd scored after Jeff Kenner's effort earlier. Good flick on by Campbell. Limpar finds Ian Wright. Oh, wonderful, wonderful goal. A goal of absolute quality, and it's Ian Wright, his second of the match. And the link-up between the attacking players then was really terrific. Limpar, who finally lifted it over the top of Mankow, and Ian Wright, having scored earlier with a diving header, this time a thumping right foot shot. Campbell had had the original flick on, and that one's absolutely buried. Half an hour gone, Arsenal lead 2-0. And he knows that they've got some tricky fixtures coming up after this one. Sheffield United, Oldham, Chelsea and Manchester City, the next four fixtures. Southampton in need of points. It's a first half in which Arsenal have really looked hardly troubled. Two goals from Ian Wright to give them the lead at half-time. But how important, too, were the saves of David Seaman. Arsenal have got smiles on their faces. They look relaxed as they go in at half-time, and who can blame them? Southampton nil, Arsenal two. Southampton lost at Highbury earlier this season by one goal to nil. And facing the prospect here this afternoon, of Arsenal inflicting the double against them. Southampton 18th in the Premier League on 32 points. They do have uh, one game at least in hand over most of the teams below them. But with those four tricky fixtures coming up after this afternoon, they won't want to emerge from this match without any points. But they'll have to do more in the second half These Arsenal players have to take every opportunity they get to play in the first team. Ray Parler, who won his eighth England under-21 cap against Denmark recently. Glad of an opportunity this afternoon. Linigan, Dowie, a willing runner. Oh, Siemens giving it straight to Maskell. And he pulls off another remarkable save. And makes up for his own error. Linigan and David Seaman exchanging a few words. There was nothing angry about it, just a shrug of the shoulders. Kenner knocks it in, Dowie knocks it back. And that'll be a corner. But David Seaman, having made the initial mistake when he inexplicably kicked it straight to Craig Mask Maskell on the edge of the penalty area, who cut inside Winterburn. But again, he couldn't beat the keeper. That was Wood who won that, and Seaman has collected it right underneath his crossbar. Well, Maskell had it on the right foot. He did hit it quite close to David Seaman, which made it that little bit easier. Lee Dixon, 21 England caps to his credit, and now 30 years of age. the head of Linigan. Southampton with the throw. They did win this fixture last season by two goals to nil. Goals from Madison and Dowie on that occasion. But that's the scoreline this afternoon by which they trail. 
and Alan Ball's shouts in the dugouts becoming increasingly desperate. Here's Maskell. That's a good effort. But David Seaman makes goalkeeping look so easy. It was at him, so it wasn't that difficult to deal with. But he's so cool, David Seaman. And if you were looking for one reason above all others, maybe, why Arsenal have only conceded 17 goals in the Premier League this season, surely it would be him. Dixon in so quickly, but he didn't keep possession. Simon Charlton! Oh, wonderful shot! And when they finally get past David Seaman, they don't beat the woodwork. Charlton on the left foot finally got past David Seaman, but didn't beat the woodwork. And Arsenal were just caught offside, Ian Wright. Kenna to Dowie. Allen. They all appeal. And Southampton get the decision. Dowie. Oh, Keown was in very quickly. Monkow. Dispossessed by Wright. Limpar, whose pace has taken him away from Monkow into the penalty area. It looks as if a penalty is given. He's waving away the protests. He didn't point straight away, David Frampton. He had a good look and he thought about it. Limpar had beaten Moncal for pace around the outside. And the challenge of the big defender has been a judge the penalty. They get very tight. They get wrapped up together. And it was that little extra push forward by Limpar. And when he tried to step in front of Moncao, down he went. And after a moment's hesitation, the penalty which Ian Wright has dispatched for a hat-trick, already claiming the ball. Arsenal three, Ian Wright three. It's 31 goals this season from Ian Wright. Completing the hat-trick courtesy of the penalty spot. And having scored a hat-trick when he returned to the team for the last away match against Ipswich which Arsenal won 5-1 following that up with another one at Southampton and he's reminding the crowd who were barracking him that he has scored three and it's reasonably good natured I don't think they can get into trouble for that but uh, as in the first half Arsenal with that third goal have succeeded in quieting the crowd and without that vocal support, which had been building up for Southampton, the match now becoming a very quiet affair indeed. Keown stealing it. And Moncal losing out to Ian Wright. Here's Smith. Well, there's a hunger about Arsenal. Wright knocks it on. Campbell's there. It's number four. It's too easy. It's a match which is really piling the problems up for Southampton. In 18th position in the Premier League with 32 points. Wasn't a pretty goal, but Arsenal won't mind. And Kevin Campbell won't mind. He's 17th of the season with just over five minutes left. Alan Ball knows the size of the problem. The team finished 18th last season. They just were one point above relegation to survive on that occasion, and it's going to be another tight one. Came off the defender, I think. Selly. Moncow comes up from the back. We are approaching the conclusion of 90 minutes. Smith who plays it out it's been a virtuoso performance from Ian Wright the England striker with a hat-trick and George Graham with plenty to be happy about his counterpart Alan Ball with a lot of thinking to do 
He wants the ball, he's got it already. And it's tucked up under the shirt and already claimed. Final score here, Southampton nil, Arsenal four. That's a, a second hat-trick in consecutive matches for you in league matches. Well, uh, yeah, um, I'm quite pleased with it. Like I say, I couldn't do it without the boys. They do so well for me. You know, Ender's done a lovely flick over for my second goal. And Ian said he picked me up marvellously for the first goal. You know, I'm just trying to get on the end of things now. On the day, uh, the good players in the Arsenal side outworked a lot of my players today. And we're disappointed in our, uh, in our output, work rate-wise. You know, like there's been the last few games, we've not really had a great deal to do. You know, it's, um, it's the same old thing, you know, you don't need, you get a few crosses and what have you. People think you've had nothing to do. But like today, I had a few shots, you know, and, and a few crosses and it's worked out all right. So you're saying you sometimes get bored playing behind this <laughs> Arsenal defence, do you? No, no, I'm more happy when I'm not doing anything. Uh, I just don't want people to panic. People uh, know me, they know that uh, I'll, I'll dredge every little bit I possibly can out of these players and they're prepared to give it. Today, they're disappointed with their own performances and they've been brutally honest with themselves, which is nice. And when they are, as honest as they've, they've, they've been, then you've got a bit of a chance as a manager. Arsenal have their critics, but they were more than effective today. They were entertaining, weren't they? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, the passing showed that they can be as good as anyone. Uh, I think defensively, you mustn't underestimate that. I mean, 17 goals in 32 games now conceded, uh, and three of those were the opening game against Coventry at uh, the start of the season. So, you know, defensively, they are very, very tight. And I think David Seaman, uh, he makes two or three key saves. I mean, you know, the 4 0 scoreline looks, you know, as if it might be flattering to Arsenal because look at that, a great save to his left. Uh, you know, that was just after Arsenal had gone ahead, one all at that stage. And of course, a couple of minutes later from a corner kick again unusual for them just to get a free header for Steve Wood and as it comes down to Madison you know point blank save and those two in a couple of minutes and from then of course Arsenal went on got two up and then just at the start of the second half where I'm sure Alan Ball's given his side a G up he makes a mistake and for me he's one of the best keepers that's standing up in these situations he covers the near post then he comes out doesn't commit himself all right I think Maskell could have hit it into the corner better but he does stand up well in those situations but from an attacking point of view their movement was, was excellent uh, I mean you know I think I think they've drawn 12 games this year if they could have been sort of positive in just a, a handful more away games uh, you know they could be running Blackburn and Manchester United very close a superb ball from Selly there and Ian Wright well he he just picked out the, the back post and he drew away from his defender he's so good at finding space in tight situations now we, we remark about you know strikers not always doing the job defensively here he is with Jeff Kenner he tracked him back jogging upfield and then from the goal kick from there, when Campbell heads it on, look at his movement across Moncow, gets a yard or two of space, and, and well, it's a stunning volley. And although he'll be the first to admit today, the blend of the three midfield players, Ray Parler's strong running, Ian Selly, who I think's got excellent vision, and is only 19, mm -hmm. and then Anders Limpar with a few tricks. The supply to him today was excellent. I like a lot of the fans, like Arsenal, when Limpar's in the team. Yes, I mean, Paul Merson's not in the side today. I mean, they can be exciting. Uh, you know, it's just the odd games you think, well, it's, is it the same side? And if they can get that consistency that they're showing at the moment, then certainly they're always going to be a threat. Thanks, Trev. Our other main feature tonight is Manchester City against Sheffield United coming up in a few minutes. But now the latest chapter in Manchester United's exciting bid to win their second title running. They were away to the bottom club Swindon Town. Swindon had Kill Klein back in defence, Sanchez signed from Wimbledon in midfield, and Frank McAvenny on loan from Celtic up front. For United, McClare was in for the injured Kanchelskis, and Schmeichel was in goal despite being banned for next week's Wembley final against Aston Villa. Once again, a Manchester United match will make tomorrow's football headlines, and it was watched by Clive Tilsley. Hints with the challenge, here's Hughes, Cantona. We might have thread it through quickly into the path of Hughes. Kilcline couldn't cut it out. Here's Roy Keane, and that's number one. It's taken just 12 minutes to arrive. A bit of a slip by Kilcline. Cantona's pass found a way through to Hughes, and Keane had the space to bury his first goal for nine games, his eighth of the season. to see off Hughes, who's uh, had a little altercation with some supporters there. He's very angry about something, Mark Hughes. In fact, he's holding his face. Now, it's stating the obvious to say that it's inadvisable 
to engage in an argument with fans, but having said that, he was clearly provoked. A little bit of space for Frank McAvenny. Away from Parker. Not from Bruce, though. Naiho with a shot, took an inflection, he did! With Naiho to equalise to Swindon Town. And bottom of the table they may be, but they are made of stern stuff. Luke Nyholt's first goal in English football, set up initially by Frank McAvenny. Steve Bruce got a good chance in on him, but Roy Keane on the edge of the penalty area just dangled a foot of the ball and diverted it beyond Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> McClare in towards Hughes. Oh, he had a side of goal there. Just still half a yard on Kilcline. Monko with a free kick. Headed by Pallister, came off Kilcline. Fjortop couldn't get to it, in sort of that. Monker. Oh, lovely run. John Monker. Oh, has got the finish it deserved. from Giggs, McClare, Ince, Giggs again, found its way to Keane, but Warlock uh, stood his ground well, Irwin, came off some of it, McClare trying to make something of it, Ince, oh, beautifully struck, beautiful goal, Paul Inch puts Manchester United back in front. Clean as a whistle. Insta Giggs. Hughes. This is Taylor. Captain's example. He's running away from the ball. Steve Bruce, the other skipper, had to reply. Really has been an inspiration to Swindon. Got a priceless goal for them in the uh, playoff final at Wembley. It's towards Kilcline. So Michael not only took it with consummate ease, but had set Manchester United going forward in the blink of an eye. Cantona tackled though by Monka. Didn't like it, got it back. Oh, now the referee was very, very close to that. Monka lies on the ground. Cantona under the microscope again. There's a card coming out. It's red. And Cantona goes out of the match. And as it happens, out of the big showdown at Blackburn in a fortnight's time. There was a time early last season where Manchester United made quite public the fact that they didn't particularly want Brian Hill refereeing any more of their games. This is the first time he's taken charge of them since. Taylor. In towards Scott, Michael Combs makes a punch, chance for Whitbread, chance for Scott, chance for Sanchez, chance for Hughes down towards Giggs. Digby with his head. It's Inch though. Brought down by Kilcline. Good advantage. Giggs. McClare! He had Inch behind him. And Inch is letting him know about it. He was better position. Irwin got a foot to it. This is Ling. This is Scott. Fjortov in pursuit, it's come for Sanchez, charged down by Pallister. That's it. It wasn't the most attractive football match that these two sides have been involved in this season, but there were plenty of talking points. All that will be overshadowed 
by the dismissal of Eric Cantona after 20 minutes of the second half. The final scoreline will really play only a bit part in that story. It's Swindon Town 2, Manchester United 2. Well, now we know what's right with Cantona. He's a genius, but what is wrong with him? Well, you're right, he is a prodigious talent, but he's shown time and time again that if you get tight, if you hustle and harry him, if you get him frustrated, he will retaliate, you know, he will hit out at opponents. And this is a classic example. He gets it here, Munkur goes to him, lets him come inside, he has a little bad touch there, Munkur goes down, a good tackle, there's a tussle, Munkur goes back in the ground, and that's an atrocious tackle, six studs in Munkur's chest. The referee is right in the spot, there's a culminating scuffle, well, he had, to, he had to go off, there's no question about it. I mean, the thing for me, there's no justification for it at the best of times, but at this stage, it defies logic, because he's side a 2-1 up, you know, he's in possession, he's picked out from Schmeichel, he's in the middle of the field, there's no danger to his side. John Moncourt makes a good tackle, and then he is one of the least aggressive midfield players you're likely to play against, and so to stamp on him like that is just, well, ridiculous. This is it from a previous unseen angle, and it just gets worse. Again, he comes inside, it's a good tackle from John Moncur, he goes down, there is a tussle, and I think to be fair to Cantona, if you watch closely, he gets his legs wrapped round Cantona and he just a little tug at the sleeve, but the referee I'm sure is going to give a foul to Manchester United, they're 2-1 up, there is no need for this at all, this shows a complete lack of discipline, he just loses control, and that is totally outrageous, and he deserves to, to go off and and get banned. The referee was right on the spot there, as you see from that picture, but um, he then consulted the linesman, didn't he, to make sure, was it? Uh... Well, I think, <laughs> I think you're just making certain that um, the linesman thought that, that Cantona had, had stood on. But he, as you see, he was two yards away from the incident. And, uh, and what happens, of course, is now that he's cost Manchester United two points here, and they go to, to Highbury on Tuesday night, and instead of having an air of optimism and supreme confidence, I would imagine there'll be despondency in that camp. And it's yeah. costly in another way too, Trevor, I was just going to say, because he, he'll miss the matches, likely to miss three matches, isn't he? He'll miss the game against Blackburn, a vital game, a league game against Oldham, and then the semi-final as well against Oldham. That's right. I mean, the key one, though, now is Tuesday at Arsenal. And, you know, I saw Martin Cohn do a man-to-man -man marking job on Matt Letizia today, and he marked him superbly. And he's going to probably, I'm sure, pick up Cantona on Tuesday, and he's going to be the sort of defender or marker who's going to frustrate him, aggravate him, and suddenly he's brought the whole media spot spotlight on himself. and and he's certainly going to have to watch him st his step now each game he plays in. Alan, people who are not committed to United are concerned, I think, right now about the sort of petulance that's crept into their game. They're wonderful players, they play football like no other team at the moment, but certain members of the team are petulant almost throughout the match. There was a running confrontation between Ince and Norholt, wasn't it, for Swindon today? Nightfall. That's right, yeah, and I think that since Christmas we've seen incidents where Schmeichel's been running 50 yards to get involved in incidents where he should still win his goal line. You have Ince having to go to referees, you've even had King having to go to referees. Now they're going for a treble which is unprecedented. The pressure is building up, every game is going to be more and more difficult. But the, west, the best way to show two fingers to your critics is by showing medals at the end of the season, not by going on the pitch and doing that. Mm -hmm. So you think the club ought to take a grip of it? There's only one man that can take control, and that's the manager. The manager's got to sort the problem out, and it's up to Alex Ferguson to do that. OK. Well, now to two clubs fighting to stay in the Premiership, Manchester City and Sheffield United. Barry Davis with the commentary. And up front for United, a man who'd already scored against Manchester City this season, Nathan Blake, for Cardiff City in the Cup. Nathan Blake. Sweet turn by Blake. He's still got it. That's a corner. Two goals in four appearances is Blake's record for United and only in the last match against Queen's Park Rangers when he scored the equaliser has he been in the side from the kickoff. The other number 30, Paul Walsh, hasn't scored for eight matches since Portsmouth's Coca-Cola Cup match at Old Trafford. But he probably still can't quite believe that he didn't mark his debut last week by making a goal for Uwe Rosler. But the German completely missed his header. Both the Germans on loan are in the starting lineup this afternoon. Rössler from Dynamo Dresden, Stefan Karl from Borussia Dortmund. And David Brightwell is in at left back, allowing Terry Phelan to move into midfield. Glyn Hodges and Roger Nielsen both failed fitness tests, so are out of United's side. 
but Dane Whitehouse returns after suspension to play in a team captain as usual by Brian Gale who was a member of the Manchester City side which won promotion back to the top division in season 89-90 doesn't take much to uh, make Alan Gunn our referee smile pity is that he's in his last season and that's his decision Blake was the first touch. Whitewell and Phelan immediately showing the opposition where they're going to play. Walsh, it would have been a major surprise to uh, Dave Bassett, which has been suffering from a lot of rain. And Coton deciding that it was better if the defender cleared it. takes the throw back to Paul Beasley playing at left back and the flag is up for offside against Franz Carr and the referee wants words with the uh, Paul Beasley for delaying the game, really. Free kick had been given. And Mr. Smiler becomes Mr. Stern. Wash. That's well cleared by Gale. And that was not the most pleasant of challenges by Andy Hill. A lot at stake in this match. And the referee might have to be pretty stern in the opening stages in particular. Let's look at the challenge. Well, it has to be said that his opponent was looking for it as well. McMahon, Walsh. Good challenge by Rocastle. And the free kick is given to City. Looking sharp, David Rocastle. He's done well since he came here in a side that's been struggling to find form. Uh, swapped with David White White going to Leeds just before the turn of the year Carl might fancy having a go from here that's a good strike Alan Kelly down to it but he must have been hugely relieved that the ball flew over the top just flung himself at the ball where it went from that point onwards was pure fortune. Carl again loses to Rogers. A lively start to an important fixture. And Manchester City playing with a, a good deal more confidence than one might have anticipated. Few days in Jersey have obviously done them a bit of good. Well, the Channel Islands is doing well for uh, English football at the moment. And two in the England side. Carl again. Well, he's getting a few sighters in. Out by Whitehouse. Blake. Early ball, good one. It wasn't a bad knockback either. It's a little unlucky, French car. Tuttle, Beasley, Flo, Quagmire, oh, they say uh, goalkeepers earn their luck, I think Kelly hadn't actually done anything before that to earn his, but uh, he's had a slice at the beginning, obviously didn't see it terribly well, just flung himself at the ball, and it squirmed pretty sharply off his body and over the top. Vonk. Well, it was clearly intended to nod it down to Tony Coton. And there was a total lack of awareness that uh, Whitehouse was behind him. Hey, hey. Get up. 
Carr. Good shimmy. And nice play. Header was from Flo. But it was a nicely clipped cross by Carr. Carr underneath it a bit too much, and that's why it cleared the crossbar. Sit now down on the bench, a bit nearer to the half-time dressing room. Half-time approaches. One by Gale. Cleared by Flo. Hard to chase. Whitehouse does too. It's still loose there. Uh, great credit to Dane Whitehouse. Took on two and, as the saying goes, showed a clean pair of heels. And then it stuck. Two going for it. And Coton grabbing it. Here's Phelan. Good play, Phelan. And shot with the outside of the left boot. Kenny couldn't hold on to. Feeling again. Challenged by Paul Walsh. Feeling still feeling that knock. Didn't really see enough of the ball in the first period. Brilliant stop. And I would have thought that he took that full in the face. Really brave goalkeeping by Alan Kelly. Because it bounced off Gale. Who hadn't really had a clear view of it. And Kelly, look at the speed with which he pounced. And he caught Paul Walsh's foot. I don't think any of the Sheffield United management team would know they have a very brave goalkeeper. Well done, Kelly. That's onside, Blake. Real chance. Not taken. But the goalkeeper narrowed the angle. And block coming feet first. Blocked it well, he got his angle absolutely right. His feet were nearer the player, but he got his body across well. Car. Kernigan's headed clearance needed the extra touch. And Phelan on the run again, matched by a player of similar physique and pace. Search for three points continues for both sides. Francis Lee leans further forward, nine points out of a possible 21 since he became the chairman. Rowcastle. Walsh and Tuttle. Oh! Side netting. He was pretty quickly across, was Kelly. But Walsh certainly thought it was worth the try. Thought Tuttle looked as though he got him. Well, if he'd have got it inside the post, it would have been a very close run thing. Good shoulder by Griffiths. Space is left side. Still left side. Phelan. Tight.
Is it cleanly enough but from Manchester's point of view, Manchester City's point of view, just the wrong side of the post? A moment of hesitation in that move by Stefan Karl, which in the end proved to be costly because it forced the final shot to come from a slightly too wide position. Blake, beautifully away. Whitehouse misses the chance. One goes away at one end and one goes away at the other, but the pace of turning away by Blake. And I suppose he would feel that this time the away point wouldn't be so dusty. Both sides have had their chances. Kernahan. I'll see my gauge. Low. Chase for Blake, this is a real chance! Up comes Carr. And amazingly, Coton gets back to make the catch. Blake remains down hurt, and the referee stops the match for Blake to get attention. Well, Blake made the charge down the middle, and the protests from Sheffield United players can only be was this a foul? Well, it was outside. But the referee has to decide, A, was it a foul? And B, was it a scoring opportunity? Coton coming sprinting out. He was outside his area as he made the challenge. And what sort of challenge was it? He's very lucky, Tony Coton. Lowcaster beats the referee, and then Flo, and the referee decides that is enough, and both sides have to settle for one point. One brilliant, brave save by this man, Alan Kelly, denying perhaps the closest to a goal. He made a save early on too, about which I don't think he knew very much. But for all the efforts of the senior citizen, and all the efforts of everyone on the pitch, they could not, between them, find a winning goal. Both sides had spells when they felt they were on top. Both sides had spells when everything seemed to be going wrong. One point apiece is the final outcome. Dave, you said in midweek you're running out of games. We need the victories. Yeah, that's correct. A uh, draw is not a good result for us. Uh, as I say, Manchester City would be absolutely delighted with the draw uh, to get away with it and keep the sort of same situation between us in points total. We was worth a victory. We thought we could get the victory, but uh, we just couldn't get the final goal or the final touch at the right moment. But uh, we're battle on to the end. You're used to winning things, so how much more difficult is it to, to avoid losing things, as it were? Oh, well, I don't really. It's the same thing. You know, you go out there every Saturday and you try to do your best always. And it's just that, um, as I said before, we're, we're one thing or another that's happened all season, it doesn't make it any easier for us. But that's not, not an excuse. Players have still got to do it. It's, it's a big enough club, with big enough players, and I think we've got to take more responsibility. <laughs> just finally a word about, uh, about Brian Hall. Do you feel for him in his particular position? Yeah, I mean, there for the grace of God, go any of our managers. I mean, I'm below Brian Thornton. He might be commiserating with me. My chairman might give me the call on Monday. I mean, I don't think so, because in India, it's happened. But, uh, 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 so that's a bit of luck. Uh, um, no, I mean, any manager, you know, down the bottom, they're all good lads. I mean, you know, you work with them, and uh, it's a pressure game, and you feel sorry for people, you know, when they either get dismissed, and Brian hasn't been dismissed. But, you know, there's obviously speculation comes about managers' futures and everything else. And uh, as I say, you know, you realise, you know, I had the sack at Watford, and you realise it can happen to you and uh, you know we have to hang on in there and you have to live with that you speak a good game i tell you that <laughs> <laughs> you don't play too badly either thanks very much indeed <laughs> dave there's a call for you it's from madras <laughs> <laughs> <The gym. laughs> i like it Les. we've got some funsters on our team haven't we um it was a dog fight really wasn't it yeah, I think Sheffield United were the better side. I thought they played well at Tottenham a fortnight ago. I thought they played well today. They were good in defence. They hit in the break. A bit of pace up front in Blake. 
he could have scored two or three, had a little bit more composure. But they've got to start winning games. Draws are no use to them. You know, there's six points behind the, um, the fourth or fifth place side, and they've got to start winning the games. As I say, they've got to get the three points. Manchester City are struggling a bit. They've got some excellent players, but when you're down there, the mere fact that you've got excellent players counts for absolutely nothing. Yeah. Well, Blake might have scored one if Coton hadn't sort of interrupted him. Um, was that a foul or was I imagining things? Yeah, well, I don't think you're imagining anything. Good ball from Flo. Blake goes through. Coton comes off his line and I think he just takes him there. Carr comes in. It's a great opportunity and Kernigan does well. Coton gets back in the line and saves it. But we can see here Coton comes out. Blake puts it past him. He tries to get the way. He just clips his, his leg there. Carr comes in, he really should score from this position, and I'm not sure that Kernigan doesn't handle this as well. If you watch the left hand comes out, it's debatable whether that hits him in the hand or not. Might but, have been the knee, I think. But Tony Cotton should have been sent off. Alan Gunn's got to send him off. You've got to have consistency. Well, Mr Gunn has been in these sort of incidents a couple of times now. There was that Bosnich thing which we've yes. referred to before. Well, what we've got to look for is consistency. That's the key to it. And I think goalkeepers have got to realise if they come racing out of the penalty area and, and they don't make contact, first of all, with the ball and the player gets there first and they bring them down, then they are going to be sent off. And in that situation, I don't think Alan Gunn had any alternative, as the law stands now, and, and the fact that Coton didn't get there first, he had to go off. And, you know, I, I just think uh, until we get to consistency, the goalkeeper's always going to have the chance of an out. And so He's had one letter, Alan Gunn. He's going to get another there. <laughs> yeah, not from us. Not from us, though. Well, now the other games, and we begin with uh, Cup semi finalist Oldham Athletic, another of the clubs desperate for points to stay up, and they were away to Aston Villa. Here were two clubs playing for nearly an hour as though their minds were partially elsewhere, on Wembley and Manchester United, perhaps. Then Steve Froggart's cross could have been allowed to pass harmlessly by, but Steve Redmond couldn't bring himself to leave it alone. Slow motion reveals a double embarrassment, not just an own goal, Redmond put it in with his hand. That did nothing for Villa's lethargy, but it certainly animated Oldham. Rick Holden and Nick Henry combined down the left. Darren Beckford needed only a touch. Seven minutes later, a free kick in a dangerously central position, Rick Holden exploited it to perfection. Precious points for Oldham, beaten only once now in ten games. A rocket for Villa, said Ron Atkinson. It was an insult to the fans, the club and professional football. Spurs are finding it very difficult to get away from the dreaded relegation zone and they found it difficult to get going in the first half today. Ipswich took the lead early on. Gavin Johnson carried the ball forward. Chris Kiwomia's finish was neat and worrying for Spurs who started to show signs of panic. They were a different side in the second half though and had gone close on a couple of occasions before Ronnie Rosenthal's deep cross was headed down by former Ipswich player Jason Dizel. Nicky Barnby made it one all. That was the result, but the statistic Spurs fans won't like to see is that it means they've taken three points out of the last 30. They will like hearing Teddy Sheringham could be back next week because the games are running out. Games are running out, but we've just got to keep going, you know. I mean, we didn't play football today, you know. The, the fans saw that and, you know, I don't, I don't know why we didn't really. But we've just got to keep going, really. This one had a bit of form. Chelsea had won five of their last six games. Liverpool hadn't been beaten at Anfield in the Premiership for six months. The match was only eight minutes old when Dimitri Karin failed to hold Mark Wright's header and Ian Rush's reactions, not for the first time, were decisive. Then Chelsea took over the scoring, unfortunately with an absolute gem for the Golden Own Goals video. Craig Burley with the header. There was only one way to atone for a perler of that calibre, and Chelsea produced it. The scorer, Craig Burley again. A game for him to remember or forget. Will Liverpool send him a little something if they qualify for Europe? Or is that still a realistic target? Obviously, we've got to win as many games as we can. That's our main aim. We don't, we're not going to set ourselves standards, um, set ourselves targets, because uh, you don't really know, you know what can happen. If we win two or three games again, we can be right up there. An emergency board meeting at Loftus Road tonight overshadowed a Rangers victory this afternoon. Wimbledon had threatened from set pieces early on. John Scales denied by a combination of Darren Peacock on the line and Carl Reedy hacking the ball away. The goal that won the game came in the second half. From a long free kick, Devon White flicked the ball on. 
It fell to Les Ferdinand, he controlled it, rolled into the path of Peacock, he whacked it past Hans Sagers. Rangers manager Jerry Francis, who's had an 18-year association with the club, wasn't that happy with the performance, he was satisfied with the result. As to his future, he nailed his colours to the mass, saying he wants to stay with the club, but the fact that chairman Richard Thompson has allowed managerless wolves to approach him has made him feel Rangers aren't keen to keep him. An estimated 1,000 fans protested in his favour. A section invaded the pitch, their anger directed at Richard Thompson. The outcome of tonight's board meeting will be made public on Monday. Games at Elland Road recently haven't been much to ride home about, and the post office won't make a fortune out of this one. Coventry are in a barren spell, and that's when errors get punished. Having failed to clear the ball, they get caught when Rod Wallace trundles it back with a Grizovich unsighted. Leeds won, Coventry nil, and that was that. But Leeds hold on to fifth place. West Ham's season rests on Wednesday's FA Cup quarter-final replay at Luton. Newcastle still have an eye on the UEFA Cup place. First blood to Newcastle at Upton Park today. Robert Lee, born Virtue next door to West Ham's ground, put them ahead with a shot that was deflected in by Steve Potts. Five second-half goals followed. West Ham putting together a great seven-man move to equalise. Bishop, Marsh and Breaker at the final three. Breaker the scorer, but it was a real team goal. Newcastle's Andy Cole went into the match with 34 goals to his name, but none of them have been scored in London. He put the situation right when Beardsley played it wide, Cole connecting with a rule fox cross. Back in front at 2-1, the vital fourth goal went to Newcastle, again through Robert Lee. Overshadowed by Cole and Beardsley's brilliant form so far this season, the dynamic duo played him in for his second goal of the game. And that's adding to the two he scored last Saturday. West Ham showed the spirit they'll need at Luton on Wednesday, with 10 minutes to go. Matty Holmes' free kick, headed in by Alvin Martin. Now they had a fighting chance. But it was no great surprise when Newcastle had the final word in the final seconds. Beardsley escaped down the right. Cole stretched, couldn't make it. Recovered to set up substitute Alex Mathy, who rubber-stamped his side's fourth successive win. 63 goals for Newcastle so far this season. Only Manchester United can beat that. And the table, Manchester United's draw at Swindon has increased their lead to eight points, though Blackburn can reduce the gap, of course, at Sheffield Wednesday tomorrow, and Newcastle stay third after their win at West Ham. And the other half looks like this. Swindon stay bottom despite earning that point against the leaders. Sheffield United's fifth draw in six games keeps them next to last. Oldham are now just one point behind Manchester City and with two games in hand. And before we leave...